what's up Nitro Gang? So today I'm just gonna be doing this cleanup on this old Tamiya 0.18 engine from the Terra Crusher I'm rebuilding for a viewer. So this thing it does run, but I just took it out of the car because the truck, like almost all other Terra Crushers, has the notorious slipping problem. And I don't know, it it just slips whenever I ex try to accelerate. The engine revs, but the car does barely moves. Like, I have the slipping problem on my uh, Terra Crusher 2. The slipping problem on this one is a lot worse than the one on mine. So, we're going to be taking this apart, the transmission. We're going to do a full rebuild, and we're going to clean the forward clutch, like Hybrid 32494 has told me to do, and we're going to see if that fixes our problems. And I did find a 15-year-old video on how to take it apart the frat, but it's honestly 15 years old and it's just super pixelated. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make an e easier to follow tutorial video for people who just don't really, like people like me who don't really like looking at that fit 20 year old YouTube video, honestly. So for now, we're just gonna take apart this engine and just, you know, clean it up because there's a bunch of dirt you can see. But yeah, we're just gonna be cleaning this up and freshening it up a little bit. Also, I have to mention this thing I just got today for 70, 70 bucks. It's an RC10 GT. It's the blue pan chassis and it has a Traxxas 2.5R. So this one it has quite a bit of upgrades added to it. It has all aluminum shock towers. So you see those right there and it has aluminum steering blocks and a pretty decently clean aluminum chassis well, and a pretty nice pipe. Okay guys, so we're just going to do a partial rebuild on this engine. I'm going to take off the carb and the clutch assembly and the backplate assembly. Also including the exhaust manifold. And also while we're doing that, we're just going to clean everything up because, you know, this thing looks like it's been through mud. And we're going to be adding a new cooling head, exhaust manifold, a new engine mount, and a new exhaust gasket. So, I have all my tools right here, so I'm just going to take off the cylinder head. So this is a small block, so this head screws are 2 millimeters. Let's just hope nothing's stripped. And even if it is stripped, I have like two, like three spare engines for the Terra Crusher, so it's fine. And I've never opened this up before, so what you're about to see is my first time seeing anything inside this engine, but it did seem to run nicely. Okay, so we got all the screws out, no stripping. And Right, it looks like one screw's still in there. There we go. Oh yeah, that is pretty black, guys. You can see in there. It's pretty black. So this looks like it's had a lot of runtime. So that, so that explains why the trans is slipping. Hmm. Well, it does seem to have good pinch. I'm just gonna put a little bit of after run oil. And that's all good. I'm just going to turn it over a couple of times. And, yep, it has good pop. I'm going to take off the carb and the exhaust manifold. So the carb is held on by two screws. You can see one right there. One right there. And another, just like it, right there. So you're just going to take off these two screws. And it's kind of hard to get this one out, though. There we go. So that's one. This one was pretty loose. And that's two. So there we have our carb out. I'm going to clean this with carb cleaner. 
and we can see our crankshaft, so looks to be pretty okay condition. But everything around it is muddy, so we're just gonna use carb cleaner and just blow everything off. And while I'm at it, I'm just gonna clean these screws just because they have a bunch of dust or mud. So, yeah, that's good. We'll put these aside. We're gonna use a 2.5 millimeter to take out the exhaust manifold screws. So, this one's not stripped because I took it out earlier to get the starter wire off. And there's our other one. And there we go. Okay, so the exhaust manifold looks like it's frozen in place on the manifold. I'm guessing. So we're we're just going to be um, putting in a new exhaust gasket. Um, there it fell out, but it's pretty oily. I bet I could crack it. So we're not going to be using this. We're just I'm just going to put this to the side as well. And we have a new exhaust manifold. So we're going to be installing this once we clean everything up. But first, I'm just going to disassemble everything. And have four engine mount screws now we can access these are just four 2.5 millimeters and screws with lock nuts there's one two okay no three there we go and four so now we can take off our engine mount just like that. And we have our four screws right there. You can see those. And we're just going to put this to the side. We're going to be installing the blue anodized one. Yep, has good pop. Now what I'm going to do is now take out these four Phillips screws holding the starter plate on. And then there's two more that's holding on the back plate. I'm not going to be taking those off just because I don't really want to, I don't really care about what's happening inside the, about the bearings and the stuff because it, it seemed to run fine, so it's all right. And there we have our starter plate assembly off, so you can see this is pretty dirty. So I'm just going to be cleaning this off outside with carb cleaner. Put that off to the side. And it doesn't look like there's a lot of leaking. I think it's just the oil from the starter unit that's making that. So I'm just going to be taking this off. It's a 2.5 millimeter hex. Okay, it looks like the flywheel nut is coming off now. Because that'll happen, because that's perfectly fine by me. Because you can see the flywheel nut just came off, but the, the screw stayed intact. That's perfectly fine. That happens a lot with this type of engine. It's It just likes to come off first. And also we have a washer. My tear crusher doesn't have a washer, but this one does, so I mean, oh well. And then we have, oh, this is the O-ring for the carb. And then we have a flywheel, call it. And then we have access to our front bearing. So that's all good. So I am just going to go clean this outside. You can see how dirty it is. That'll focus. You can see how dirty this is. So
So I'm just going to be cleaning this outside with carb cleaner along with the starter plate and a the flywheel and the carb. So we're going to get to that and then I'll show you the ins installation of the other parts. Okay guys, so you can see I've got the block pretty clean now. I just did a bunch with carb cleaner and just sprayed all the dirt off. See it pretty clean now. And I'm just going to put some after run oil in. There we go. I'm just going to turn it over a couple times. And put some on the crankshaft as well. Okay, that should be good. Now, I also did do the carb. You can see right there. Very clean now. I'm just going to put on the gasket and I'm just going to clean it up before I put it back on. There you go, gasket on. And the throttle arm is going to be this way, so it's going to be on the left, one facing from the rear. And then you're just going to want to put in the two small screws that hold it onto the end. Okay, that's all good. And you can see, I'm just gonna put in some after oil in there. And that's our carb. They're all clean. So I'm just gonna take out the new cylinder head. But before I do that, I'm just gonna reinstall the clutch system. So first, flywheel call it on first. Like that. And then we put on our flywheel. So put it on with the fans facing backwards. Like so. And then we have a single washer. Like that. Let's try to get it centered. There we go. And we have our clutch bell. So I'm just going to thread it in with my finger using the cap screw right here. And then now I'm just going to, now let's thread it in. I'm just going to hold the engine. And then I'm just, so I'm holding down the piston with my finger so it doesn't move. And I'm screwing it in. And then now it's all screwed in, and now the flywheel is firmly connected to the the flywheel collet. I'm just gonna give. I'm just gonna hold the flywheel and give it a sharp eighth of a turn until it doesn't go in anymore. So you can see this clutch bell springs okay. I'm not gonna really mess with that. That's all right. But ideally, you want it to be just like free spinning, like a I guess like a fidget spinner kind of. But yeah, that's all good. Okay, so now we're just going to put on the engine mount. And then, once that's done, we're going to put in the exhaust manifold. And then the cooling head. I'm just going to take this out of the package. So we have our screw set. Keep in mind which screws to use. So the longer ones are the ones that are going to thread into these the top ones so they hold the engine block to the mount and then the smaller three screws are going to bolt in from the bottom I'm just going to put it like so line up the screw holes and I'm going to take this and open this up and I'm just going to pop out all the screws there we go so like I said the long screws I'm going to have one lock nut washer, and we're going to have four of those just threading in. And you don't need to thread all these because they have washers. And I'm going to do one on the opposite side.
I'm going to put equal force on the screws to tighten them at the same time. So, this one's all tightened up. And this one is as well. So, we're just going to put on the next two screws. Like so. So now that's done, we have all the four engine screws right there, and it's all nice and secure. So I'm going to set these three screws to the side. I'm now going to put on the starter plate. So you have four screws. See, so one, two, three, four, and we're just going to put it on the back. Make sure the lettering is going up the right direction. So we have all our four screws thread it in nice and tight. We're just going to proceed to putting on the new exhaust manifold. I'm just going to take this out of the package. And we have our two long screws. I'm just going to clean these up before I put them back in. And don't forget the exhaust gasket. just fits on like that. And we're going to put these two screws from the left side of the engine. Just like that, so they're sticking out like that. And then I'm going to put the exhaust gasket over them. Those are all good. And then the exhaust manifold goes this direction. So I'm just going to thread these up with the 2.5. Okay, so now we have the exhaust manifold on, and it's nice and secure. So you just tighten these two screws like I showed you. So now that's all done. All we have to do is put on the new heat sink and the head button. So you just put in like so, and I'm going to put it in to it basically clicks into place. And we're going to have a four, I'm going to put them, four heat sink screws, and these are two millimeters. And now you can just torque them down. That's all good. I don't have the glow plug in there, but I can feel a decent amount of pinch. You can hear that. So now this is complete. We're just going to get to work on the chassis. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'm out, Nature Gang. Later.